Hey, Hawkeye fans, welcome back. Well, Floyd is coming home all the way back to Iowa City, where he rightfully belongs. We're going to recap that Minnesota game, and we've got a fantastic interview with Mason Richmond. He might be one of the best dressed Hawkeyes we've had on this set. Can't wait for you to listen to that. And um, there's no game this week. It's a bye week, so we won't have a preview. We hope you enjoy this uh, episode. Welcome back to Talking Hawks, presented by Hills Bank. <laughs> No matter where you are in life, Hills Bank is here to help you succeed. Whether you're buying your first house, saving for your child's future, or preparing for retirement, you can count on the people at Hills Bank for the support you need to reach your goals. It's easy to connect with a banker in person, over the phone, or on hillsbank.com. Because we believe banking is better through human connection. Hills Bank is an equal housing lender and FDIC member. Hi, Matt. Hey. How's it going? Kind of good. How's your day? Bringing home the bacon. Yeah. Sorry, Matt, to turn me down there. Turn down for what though? You know, like we're, we brought Floyd home. I know that was so exciting and in dominant fashion, which we love to see. The second half. Yeah. I have to say that was one of my favorite games that we've watched because the kids were asleep and, um, our kids go to bed clearly pretty early. Well, I mean, we recorded it. We on recorded Hulu, it. So. And then eventually we caught up live, like at the very end. We didn't um, have to watch commercials. It was great. That, it was beautiful. That was a nice thing. Thanks Hulu. <laughs> um, no, but then we like have this couch downstairs that we like you can put it together and it creates like this whole thing and the dog was down there just like cuddling which I know you don't love but then <laughs> we had cookies and it was up on the what's it called projector yeah. I mean for once I could actually see a game it's hard for me to see everything when I'm just down on the south well, and you're working and I'm working you know yeah the focus is sometimes on other things but last night prime all hawks it was amazing in a great game. Yeah. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. It was kind of fun in the beginning. It was like, oh, back and forth. It's going to be a good game. It's pretty exciting. And then, of course, you really love to pull away, like eventually. It's like, to me, that's what makes a good game. Like in the beginning, keep it close. That's fun. I can do that for a little bit. <laughs> don't bring it down to the wire. I don't like that kind of stuff. It hurts yeah. my heart eventually. And so um, last night, that was my kind of game. Yeah. I mean, it was, it's a tale of two halves, mm -hmm. um, which we've seen now. A couple times. Yeah. But that goes to show that we're willing and able to make adjustments at halftime. Um, at least the last two weeks for sure. Um, being able to utilize some different things in the run game, keep Caleb Johnson fresh to a point. I mean, 200 yards, leading the leading the nation. Thank you, commenters, for letting me know. Comment. Go comment. The okay, people yeah. that comment. Yeah, the yeah, commenters. Yeah, I was getting commentators. Continue. Come. Keep going. Comment. <laughs> People leaving comments, letting me know, um, and three another three touchdown. Like he's he's unstoppable. Mm -hmm. He's great. Yeah, he's got um like this really nice like I don't like to use this word because it sounds so unnatural coming out of my mouth, but he has like swag about him mm. that he's just like calm, cool, and collected. Like he gets he'll get a little excited, gets a little juice like when he scores that kind of thing. But he gets off on the sideline. He's like, it's not a big deal, guys. I'm just going to do it again when we go back out there. Relax. <laughs> the NFL build is pretty crazy too. Like absolutely mm. has the NFL build. Yeah. It's exciting. Some, I think it was David Eichel. It was like, I didn't think I would see somebody like Sean Green in an Iowa uniform like ever in my lifetime, but there is somebody now. Hmm. Kind of cool. Interesting. Yeah. He's great. Super fun to watch last night. Um, we'll start on the defensive side. You want to start on the defensive side? Yeah. Okay. Two turnovers. You know, I talked mm -hmm. about it on our preview that Minnesota was plus seven in the turnover margin. So the fact that we used that for good instead of evil uh, helped out. Jay Higgins actually leading to our first touchdown. Yeah, that was the weirdest interception <laughs> ever. He was just kind of like, thanks. Like, <laughs> yeah. That was so strange. I don't know if like their quarterback got confused what colors they were wearing that week. <laughs> It was really weird, wasn't it? You're like, it was just behind him. By like three yards, but okay. Yeah. I mean, it was just behind him. We, we got a little bit of pressure and and uh, so he threw it right to Jay, which helps. And then a tip drill goes to Quinn Schulte. Mm -hmm. Needs to work on his back juke a little bit. His little <laughs> jump cut is a little rough. We had him on last last year. Um, he doesn't need it. It's not a big deal. Either way. Did what uh, he had to do. Came up with the ball. It was a big time. Um, but uh, th there was a, a span kind of the last part of the second quarter where Minnesota went down and kind of had the momentum. So we scored early. 
they go down, they hit a great touchdown. I mean, uh, we're not really looking for the ball. We're playing the receiver. And most of the time what the DB is doing there is once the receiver's hands go up, the DB is going to play through his hands to not get the pass interference call. But he doesn't want to turn his head and then miss the ball when it's coming by. So there's like two different ways you can play. You can either turn and try and play the ball, but sometimes you lose your guy. Or you play the guy and hope that you make the play through his hands so that we don't lose the ball. That's so interesting that you bring that up because sometimes I see the guys not turning their head and I'm like, turn your head but yeah. there's two different there's when a technique s- to it yeah when you said the the second option i was like yeah that's true if you turned your head and he just made a little move like then you'd be like what are you doing right you'd be like why guy. did you st-? yes that's exactly <laughs> what they say stay on your guy it's like well you can't look at both yeah, yeah okay. um and castro did a pretty good job of trying to play through his hands they had some big tight ends like big big tight ends i can't remember what number he was his 86 was one of the tall the tight ends that you that pointed was, out um, i don't think that's the one who scored but he made, I can't leave his name, number eight. It was Deshaun Lee. Deshaun Lee. He made him look so small. From like 10 years Deshaun, we love you. Don't don't take that. It's not that we don't like him. It's just <laughs> the point of like, that guy was massive. He was really big. He was really big. So anyway, he threw it up and away for where Castro couldn't play through his hands. So the technique for playing through your hands is once the receiver's hands go up, DB doesn't... You can't swat the hands because that's going to get pass interference. But you have to play through kind of where the middle point is because that's where the ball is going to be. So he tries to play through that. Unfortunately, the other guy makes a great play, touchdown. And Castro just kind of, if you look at it, he kind of spins out and like claps a little bit like, I know I can make that play, but that was a great play. Like something like that. And we know that he's a fierce competitor. Um, and so he didn't allow it to happen later. But then they hit kind of a... They had like a swing screen kind of thing where we had two of our guys run into each other and they scored. So again, like not something that you would expect from an Iowa defense, but they made the adjustments at halftime. We also got decent pressure uh, between our four up front. We blitzed a little bit, but I mean, it's it's all about those front four getting pressure. One of the main things that was interesting too is Sean Lee was second on the stat sheet in tackles. You don't want to see a corner have eight tackles. Now, when they threw it to his side, and we're playing off coverage, they're gonna hit, we're gonna give you a hitch. We're gonna give you a hitch. We're gonna give you a hitch. We just have to make sure we don't give up the hitch and go like we did to Troy and we didn't to Minnesota. Um, but four solo tackles, so he's making the open field tackles, which is good. Um, but we also took Minnesota out of what they want to do. I mean, Minnesota has been we're gonna run first, run second, run third, run fourth, and then maybe now we'll pass has been kind of the mantra for Minnesota and P.J. Fleck really since he's been there. They threw the ball 37 times. Wow. That is not Minnesota football. Now, granted, that number skewed because when you get behind, you're going to throw more. But even when it was like uh, 21 to 7, I want to say, like they were, or 21-14, excuse me, they were really trying to throw the ball on us because we were not allowing them to run. I, I want to say they had 75 or less rushing yards. And again, Minnesota is has built themselves to be these run teams with these giant offensive linemen that can get off the ball. And we just forced them into something they didn't want to do, which is why we were advantageous when they're, when he's back having to throw that often. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else you want to say about the defense? I really liked, um, sorry, were you looking at your notes? Yeah, I was. Yeah. I can't remember it. You don't have to (laughs) put me on blast in front of everybody. (laughs) No. Um, it was a shutout I, in the second half. That's the only thing I was going to say. There was a couple of Castro's uh, tackles that I really liked. They looked really violent. <laughs> He's like so spazzy. <laughs> it's the only word that I could think of. And he like, one of them, he like, at one point, it was like a Superman swing. He like had the guy up around his shoulders. And then the guy like kind of kept going. Because I think it, maybe it was like one of the bigger tight big ends. Guys, yeah. Okay. And his feet like came up and he just like swung around with him. It was so funny. It looked like something that like Dax would do if he was trying to tackle you. Just, like, <laughs> yes. oh, but he did eventually get him down. But yeah, he um, had a couple of phones like that that I was like, what? <laughs> what the heck? Got the job done, but it just looked kind of funny. Yeah. I mean, defense, defense looked pretty good. You know who also looked really good? Who? Reese Dakin. Yeah. I was tired of everybody like getting mad at how different our punting was. Yeah. It's a freshman punter. Mm -hmm. From Australia. From Australia. So we had Tori on last year. If you haven't looked at it, check it out. Who talking about how like the sweet spot is different on a college football than it is on the Australian rules, rugby football or Australian news football, whatever he was used to playing before. It's different. And we just came from an All-American who got drafted at the fourth. Like punters don't get drafted. Mm -hmm. And now he's still doing great things in the NFL. But like you're going to expect a little bit. And you actually brought up a point when you were talking about the punt coverage team. Who else also left? Oh, Hoover. 
Yeah, like one of our great gunners, mm -hmm. like that was down in the ball. So it's like, it's going to be a little bit different. But I'll tell you what, Reese was bombing them mm -hmm. uh, against Minnesota. And I loved it. Yeah, you were like, he's feeling it. Speaking of that, okay, we're going to go to uh, um, well, what? He, he, well, the flex. No, the flex. <laughs> <laughs> because he got knocked over. <laughs> because he got knocked over. <laughs> <laughs> so opposite of football. <laughs> to be like, yeah, I got tackled. And then yeah. like flex about it. Usually yes. the person doing the tackling would be... You would think. <laughs> doing the flexing. No, in Actually, Australia, I mean, it's a little different. <laughs> so funny. Um, hopefully we can get him on the pot here pretty soon. Yes, that'd be fun. That'd be so fun. Um, I was going to bring something up. Oh, the offense. Um, I was talking about how you were like, yeah, he's feeling it. Like the the commentators, as I was saying earlier with that word, they were like, um, I don't know. I think it, was in, it had to have been in the second half. They were like... Um, uh, Lester, offensive corner, oh, really yeah. feeling it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Pan up to him, <laughs> and he like takes it. He had his headset. He like moves his microphone up, grabs his glass of water, takes a little sip, goes like this, and just like wipes off the front of his thing like that <laughs> to like smooth it out. And then it was like almost like he heard the commentators like, yeah. "No, you're right. I am totally feeling it right now." <laughs> I've called a lot of really good plays in a row. Thank you for noticing. And then he just like calmly brings his mic back down, goes back to what he was doing. But it was like the timing of it was so perfect. It's like a lead back, like everybody's. Yeah. <laughs> like that. It was great. And like the, just the gentle sip of water. Like, well, it's the smallest cup I think I've seen. Like yeah. it's not, it's like one of those Dixie cups that you would get like at the, yeah. <laughs> at the water fill station at like a normal I don't know, like an office. Yeah, like he you can just... only afford to take small sips, but just like, it just looked like so boss of him. Just like, oh, and then <laughs> wipe the shirt. Yes, yes, These yes. are the things we notice during games. Only the important stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway, the offense. Obviously, as you said, tale of two halves, which you love to say that, but yeah. Well, it keeps happening. I know. Um, Coach Ferentz actually had an interesting post-game presser when he said, we're going to find a passing game eventually. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was in the, not the presser. The, not the presser, uh, sorry, on-field. The on-field interview with the sideline, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I think we were 11 of 19 for 62 yards. Yeah. That's what we call not that much. Yep. So <laughs> hopefully we continue to push that stuff forward. But what I really liked is we were getting Cade easy completions. Mm -hmm. So first down, bootleg, hit the tight end, let him get, you know, five, six, even eight to 10 yards. Let him get out in space. Because even if he gets five yards, five yards on first down is a good play. Anything really over three yards is a good play on first down. So we were trying to utilize a couple different things there. And not only that, utilize Caleb Johnson, like I talked about in the preview of, he's so dominant, you have to play action with him. Like that has to be the majority of your game. You don't need a ton of drop back. You have to utilize him to create uh, opportunities for other guys. Mm -hmm. So that was good. Now there was a drop um, with uh, Washington Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, late in the game. He was running it out. It was a great route. Uh, they're playing off coverage. He's pushing it at the corner's outside shoulder and then snaps it off in front of him, hits him in the hands. He got to catch it. And I know that he's um, a converted running back. Actually, I think on the roster, he still is considered a running back. Um, but anyway, like that's one you got to come down with. There was one kind of over the middle of the field. Uh, I think it was early in the game. Caleb, jo or Caleb Brown, excuse me, was in the slot, kind of made a move. He was running like a glance, which... Uh, the way I would describe that is like it's a five step and then 45 degree angle. So it's like a five step post. And he didn't get his head around in time. Cade had already thrown it. And I'm pretty sure Cade was pretty mad about it and was like, turn your head around. I think there were a few more words than that based on my lip reading skills. Matt has really good lip reading skills. It's the best. <laughs> this is a person you want to watch a game with, any game, because he could be like the coach. Sometimes he'd be like, wait, rewind that. Tell me what that person's saying. <laughs> and he can do it. It's the best. No, that's true. <laughs> uh, so Cade said, turn your head around. Um, so it's like little things like that that are still working on some of the timing. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. This yeah. is totally, well, it's kind of random, but. Great. When you say like, oh, it's a five step. So at some point, like when you hear that route being called at some point in your career, do you not have to count your steps or do you always count like one, two, three, four, five turn in your head? So it's funny you say that there's so many different ways to count it. Okay. So some people say five steps and I'm breaking in. So if my right foot's up, it goes left, right, left, right, left. And I know I'm going to break off my left foot. Some people would say it's my third outside step. So my right foot is up. So left is my first outside step, right? Left is my second outside step, right? third, my next step off my left, and then you cut there. So it's three steps. So you only have to count to three instead of trying to count every revolution. Okay. 
That makes sense. So at first, like, you lost third me for step. a second there, and I was like, why would you do so it that some, way? Now, I right. count all my individual steps. You would totally do that. That makes so much sense to me. Just Based saying. on what? I'm just saying it makes sense. Because I'm calculated? Probably. Because I'm accurate? Was that? That's a DJ Khaled shout out. I'm pretty sure you said accurate. But it, because I'm accurate in what I do? I guess. I'm not saying. I'm just saying it, it makes sense. Anyway, so yes, I'm thinking five steps. Okay. But you got to be able to sprint through it. Like our outs when we ran with uh, Coach Ferentz, Coach Brian Ferentz, it was like six steps and out. So like I had to catch or I had to think six steps or I could think my third inside step, but I would count six and I knew I was going to be roughly at about 10 or 11 yards and then snap it off. Gotcha. So like you do think about like, no matter what, I know where I should approximately break at, but I still count steps. Got it. Like even a slant, three step slant, I still count to three. Just to be exact. Yeah. Anyway, so he Makes needs sense. to get his head around. So as soon as that third outside, fifth total, a 12-yard step happens, <laughs> and he, his head should turn right now so he can beat the safety. Got it. So, okay. And he didn't turn his head around in time. He like stuck his foot, set his angle, and then looked. And by set his angle, I mean, once he stepped to the post, he was looking at like, okay, where, where does my angle need to be? And then back to the quarterback. But the problem is the ball's already out. Gotcha. Like that, you only really want to set your angle on a deep route. So if it's like a post or a corner, something that where the ball is going to be up. And by post, I mean like an outside post, like a deep post to where I set my angle, be like, boom, I, I stick my foot in the ground. I'm looking at the inside goal post, for example, because I'm running the deep post. I want three steps to the post. Now I can look for the ball because I know it's going to be a high arcing ball. But one that's going to be in the middle of the field off your fifth step, it's going to be humming because he's got to beat that safety that's over the top. Gotcha. Okay. That totally makes sense to me. But those are the little things too that when you were just watching that with like the average naked eye, you'd be like, well, why did he throw it? He wasn't yeah. even looking at him. Why yeah. did he throw it that early? Yeah, like, ball, well, head should be around. Because it was all all timing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the timing really isn't like, well, if the timing's off, the play doesn't work. He just expects him to turn his head around. Like they're playing off man coverage. Well, he expects him he to turn to his head. Safety, so he has to throw the ball out. Correct, first. correct. For the safety of his player, right? There you go. I could be a quarterback at this point. Oh. <laughs> I think they're having open tryouts. Do you want to go? Are they really? <laughs> no, they're not having open tryouts. Okay, uh, continue. I need, a, I need a drink after that. <laughs> Cold water. <laughs> Cleanse the palate after. Keep telling everybody that's what's in there. It is. Okay. Until I cough after I drink one. As long as I can avoid that. It's water. Um. No, so I thought obviously the past game is going to have to continue. There was one on. more that you would, was it um, with Weijin? And he was like out near the boundary and he kind of like went for it with one hand. That was a corner route. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And then, but he, you were like, he should have turned his shoulders and like laid out for it, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Like, is that more of like an older receiver type thing to be able to do and like recognize and go for? Or is it just like, I have a hard time not seeing him lay out for that ball. Mm -hmm. And this is not a direct, obviously, I'm not. Um, meaning to critique anybody. I just think it's hard to make that one-handed catch. And so I think if there's a different way to try and get your two hands on the ball, it's a lot more secure. Even if you got to dive and run out of bounds uh, or dive and you hit the ground, but you're able to catch it through contact. I think there's there's got to be something there that can help make that a more catchable ball. Because I don't think it's a bad ball. Mm -hmm. I really think it's a good spot where only Caden Weijin can get it. That being said, uh, f we got to find some way to get two hands on the ball. Gotcha. Okay. What else? Anything else? Uh, well, Caleb Johnson, dog. We know that. But some of the stuff that we were drawing up, pretty good. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it was Caleb Johnson's second touchdown. I think it was his second touchdown. Um, the entire line is going to the right. So what that does to the defense is everybody also goes there. The problem when you do that is the end guy on the line of scrimmage can just, they, they're taught to um, go down the line of scrimmage, essentially. So if your guy leaves you, be ready for somebody to come back or be ready for a cutback or something. So you get, you're supposed to stay home. So you just kind of filter down the line of scrimmage. You chase paint. Uh, paint being the other guy's jersey. Jersey. So you chase that paint. I love all of those like isms that you use. <laughs> so you should chase the paint going down, filling the gap. And what ends up happening is there's nobody to block him. So he could just chase down the play if we didn't use what's called a seal, a seal block or a wham block. Kind of depends on who you... It depends on who's doing it, but in my realm between the multiple, the two offenses I was a part of, 
One was called a seal. One was called a wham. It was pretty similar to, to what you wanted to do. Anyway, it's meant to be an inside zone. And the running back, well, turned receiver Terrell Washington is on the right-hand side. He runs across and has to take on a D end. This is like the bang play that we watched like two or three times. He lights up the D end and the play doesn't hit in the middle where it's supposed to. So Caleb Johnson bounces it. And then that's where you see Cade go out front, attempt to make a block. He doesn't touch anybody until they're like four yards in the end zone. But, okay, but I appreciate looked, the effort. He looked fast though. I appreciate the effort. Uh, Jacob Gill doing a phenomenal job on the outside. We'll get to more about Jacob Gill here in a second. Um, doing a great job on the outside blocking. But the fact that we got a wide receiver who's willing to go in there and do that kind of dirty work against somebody who's going to outweigh him for probably almost 100 pounds. Oh, he got, what the, the commentator said he got cleated. Decleated. Like, decleated. Yeah. <laughs> Speed just like right off the ground. But I mean, like, that's a phenomenal play. Uh -huh. And then we're able to turn it into a touchdown. But the willingness to block is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. It's a great thing. Cool. Are you ready to get into your unsung hero brought to you by JB Roofing? I'm ready to get into my JB Roofing unsung hero. Okay, go. Jacob Gill. And I know I just talked about him on the previous plan. Terrell Washington Jr. did a great job on that seal block. But Jacob Gill on Caleb Johnson's fourth touchdown or third touchdown, excuse me. Um, did a great job blocking. And the and really, the offensive lineman should win on Sung Hero. Every game that Caleb Johnson's in, love you guys, Mason Richmond, you know, Logan Jones, we've had some of you guys on. We appreciate you. But I'm a wide receiver, so I'm going to give it to Jacob Gill. So on this particular play, um, well, really all night, we kind of had tight uh, splits with our receivers. We wanted them close to the line of scrimmage and bring people into the box, which is kind of counterintuitive for what you normally do, where you want to spread people out and then hit it underneath. Uh, because they've got less guys or whatever. So we bring everybody in so that way we know their safeties are going to be the fill guys, meaning that those guys are going to be more dangerous than the corner. So Jacob Gill's job in this particular one is to dig out a safety. And what I mean by dig out a safety is he's going to be flying downhill. You got to meet him and just wham, give him one of those. You get your shoulder down because you know it's going to be a big collision. And he does that just far enough for Caleb Johnson to be able to cut off his butt and then go. Both guys go down. I think Jacob Gill's like back is on the, I think his back is on the turf when Caleb Johnson makes his cut. But the fact that he's willing to go in there and like that's a bang, bang kind of hit. Does that enough of a hole is made between the offensive line and Jacob Gill forcing that safety just over enough so that way he can make the cutback and then Caleb Johnson does the rest. But um, just a great job going in there, doing his job. That is a thankless job similar to the offensive lineman although i'm thanking you right now um and typically wide receivers don't want to block we know that this is different in iowa we expect to block rick reese vanderzee i see him a lot doing really good job blocking jacob gill on the other touchdown did great job blocking but to to know that this is part of what's expected of you and then to do it at a high level i think is a good thing so digging out the safety caleb johnson ends up scoring jb roofing on some hero jacob gill Great. Well, should we get into our interview? Yeah, no preview. Do you want to? I know you touched on it in the intro, um, yeah. but the bye week coming up, we're not going to have anything. We'll probably recap a little bit about the bye week on like what was expected this past week, but we don't really need to preview anything. Uh, so instead, we're just going to give the full thing on Mason Richmond here. Perfect. Well, we hope you love it because this was one of our favorite conversations. And you just never know what to expect out of an Iowa offensive lineman because. <laughs> There's so many different personalities yes. you can get. And Mason's has got to be one of the funnier ones. Like, he's <laughs> just. He's very... almost like too nice to be a, yes. like a hard nosed tackle. Just lovely to talk great. to. So, with that, let's get into our interview. We hope you love it. Need a new roof, gutter, or siding in Eastern Iowa? Call JB Roofing and Construction, the local and reliable roofer with over 20 years of experience. They do one roof at a time, unlike others who juggle multiple projects and cut corners. They also serve a 45-mile radius around Kelowna and help you with any insurance claims. Don't wait. Call 319-656-ROOF or visit their website, jbroofingkelowna.com for a free estimate. JB Roofing and Construction, the small town roofer you can trust. Matt, did you know that Iowa City Tire does more than just tires? Well, yeah. I mean, they've been servicing vehicles in the corridor for like 40 years. Right. But did you really know that before someone had to tell you? <laughs> no. Check out how they're doing things in a very different way at Iowa City Tire and Service, where service actually comes first. The Appliance Barn offers a wide range of high quality appliances at unbeatable prices. Whether you're in the market for a new refrigerator, dishwasher, or washing machine, they've got you covered. They also have a delivery and setup department to ensure your appliances get delivered and installed quickly. To find out more, visit appliancebarn.com. All right, Hawkeye fans, today joining us from the Iowa offensive line is... 
Mason Richmond. Mason, how you doing? Very good. How are you guys? Really good. Thank you so much for dressing up. Of course. <laughs> I just, I, I didn't know the, the formality here. I, I went both ways, you know. No, it's about time somebody takes this seriously. A little bit. You know? Yeah. I mean. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You were supposed. We just forgot the bag with our real clothes. So okay. it's just a whole mix up. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. we, gotcha. We, we we're supposed to look next, better. Next time, you. if there's a sequel, for sure. <laughs> totally. <Next laughs> yes. How's it going? How are you doing? Good. Feel good. Um, you know, obviously the team's doing pretty well right now. So mm -hmm. riding that and um, you know, season's moving on. We're kind of in the thick of things. Already three games behind us, so it's like a quarter Crazy. of the season already gone. Isn't that so mm. weird when we have three home games in a row? Yeah. It is just like bizarre because then you get like like the, it's kind of like a grind just like being at home. I mean, you guys play every week aside from bye weeks, but it's a kind of a grind like yeah. being at home all three weeks. And then you're like, oh, my gosh, like that's already like three down only four. Like that that's not wild. a lot. Right. Right. They kind of get grouped together. You almost feel like because yeah. you're just in such a such a routine. It'll, yes. it'll be, you know, nice in some ways to get on the road, but also, right. you know, going to miss that Kinnick crowd for sure. Yes, definitely. It was pretty good on Saturday, wouldn't you think? Yeah, yeah. It was a good environment. I, I was just glad, you know, sometimes it doesn't exactly get all full, but I, it was a packed crowd, I think, mm -hmm. for that game. It was a big, big game, and obviously the gold out feels cool. You know, a lot of people wear black a lot of times, so we see right. the gold the gold rush of a crowd. It's pretty cool. So. It was. It this was is not how we start this segment, ever. I was just Laura. going over, like, what's been happening, Laura. what's been yeah, going that's, on. We get current to events. Do you, you start know, with that? Or you get to events. current events? No, eventually. we always start with, tell us about your upbringing. Oh, <laughs> you, know, yeah. okay. you know, Mason, usually how we do this Golly. is typically we just Am start. Am I the from, host? Yes, yeah, sorry. From the very beginning. Are you guys co-hosts or is there, is there a... I'm usually it's host okay. and then afterthought. Okay. Mason, <laughs> Mason, I just don't know a whole lot about, like, the game of football. Sure. Never played a snap in my life. Super open That's about true. the fact that a lot of people I haven't. <laughs> I don't want to know the ins and outs, but I just don't. I don't have that like <laughs> love the game, love all the things about the atmosphere. But Matt is the so he's the analyst, and then I do the rest of it. Okay, I'm like that the color commentator. Sense. Oh, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. that works. Yeah, so now you got the rundown. Gotcha. Welcome cool. to Talking Hawks. <laughs> but um, how we usually like to start is just like from the very beginning, from like when you were a kid. Sports you like to play, like where you're from, siblings, siblings where you're from, like all that good stuff. So we'll just start with that. Like where are you from? So I'm from uh, Leewood, Kansas, okay. which is a suburb of a suburb, if you will. Okay. Um, there's Overland Park area of uh, Kansas City. It's pretty popular now um, on the Kansas side of uh, Kansas City. So kind of from a bigger city, uh, bigger town, but um, definitely had that classic high school experience with, you know, the neighborhood and stuff and um, a rich uh, history of football at my high school. So um, growing up, played football, basketball. Um, do I do have a funny story? It's rare that I tell this, but another sport I played, I played baseball for a little bit. I played soccer and, uh, you know, I mean, obviously big soccer player, man, uh, literally big. I'll <laughs> emphasize that for now. Um, so when I was playing, um, one time, you know, obviously I was four or five, heard it from my mom. She said, I, uh, came off the field and, you know, I was extremely tired or something and told her, you know, my knees can't breathe right now. My knees can't <laughs> breathe, mom. I got it. I'm so tired. Basically saying I was exhausted, right? All the running around. Not for me. I think that's where she kind of figured out, you know, let's start feeding this kid and get him, get him a little heavier to play on the line and stuff. But, um, no, I, I played, uh, football and, uh, basketball for most of my life. Definitely okay. for sure. But, um, baseball is a right fielder, so I didn't have a, a long shot career there. I think, you know, that's usually where they stick the ninth guy in, but, um, <laughs> football, football and basketball, definitely in high school and, um, played defensive line at my high school, Blue Valley high school. Then, you know, obviously got recruited here. Um, went to a camp as a D lineman, uh, didn't do a single O-line drill. And then two days later they offered me an O-line. So, um, that's not, not sure what you want to take from it. There's two different ways you could say <laughs> I'm a really good athlete or, a not You're so, good so athlete. bad at defensive line. Sure, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> Coach Coach Bell was uh, really cool about it. So, um, you know, just said there was a better opportunity for me at offensive line and whatever was going to help me get to play college football somewhere. That's all I cared about. So, wow, um, yeah, that that's is... a very like bang bang recruiting story. That's right. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I I was almost, you know, oh gosh, I almost just gave myself credit right there. I, that's a rarity for me. <laughs> Uh, you know, like Lucas Van Ness never started. I, I didn't start in high school till I was a senior. Really? So did you go to um, a big school? Yeah. So I like went to a bigger a high suburb school of a suburb, right? right? It, it, yeah, it's just within, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. There's certain, there's, it's, like just a, di it's a different with? police department, I guess I, I would always oh, think. Okay, so okay. there's going to be a different city there, but, um, no, the, the town's like 200,000 people. Or the, the the town is two hundred thousand. The city, people. the city of Overland Park. 
Uh, so it's Blue Valley High School. We had uh, 400 in my class. My right. goodness. Where'd you come from? How many? Well, so we talked off air that I went to a small school, but I was also the second largest or third largest in all of South Dakota. Okay. And I graduated with 265. Okay. That's a, that's a good size for South Dakota, right? For, yes. yes. Like I said, third throughout the entire state. Not that like the class, we had three classes of football. We had B, A, and double A, and that is it. B. Yeah. Well, nine B, B, A, double A. Gotcha. Like, but to hear like a town of 200,000. Yeah. That's, not, that's not the people. right, that's not the right name of the, the that's still crazy metropolitan though. area. <laughs> uh, def, so we had 400 kids in my class. So. That's still crazy though. Yep. yep. So a big, big, uh, big city, but, um, so did yeah, you play both sides in high school or just D-line? Not really. So, um, I wore number 88, but that was just for tight end emergencies. I guess I, <laughs> you know, growing up in Kansas city, I was a huge Tony Gonzalez fan. Mm, so, sure. um, Wore that I've been wearing that since the second grade. I even played like O line in seventh grade, wearing eighty eight. So awesome. I just always have, you know, until I got here, and they said, "All right, now we need to change, change your <laughs> right. number." Finally, so I had to scratch off that tattoo I had, or <laughs> no, I didn't have a tattoo, but um, you know, I played uh, mostly defensive end, and then like you know, I was one of the bigger kids. So if we had to get mm. a, a run play going on offense, I just I was in on that. So interesting. Yeah. Okay, so kind of flip flop around. Was there? So you're six six. Right. Okay. <laughs> With shoes on, definitely. You know, it's like six, five, seven, eight. Hey, there might be proto. He's six, six. Yeah. Scouts watching. Yeah. Any, any scouts out there listening? Six, six, it's definitely six, six. And a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the helmet on, with the pads. Right. You don't have to tell them that. No, no. Yeah. You know At what? At that point, you might be like six, seven from Maybe, my Probably six, eight. Just, yeah. <laughs> Um, just for good measure. No, but was there ever a moment being as tall and as like big as you were in high school? Cause I don't think you find a lot of high schoolers that are probably that size. Was there ever a moment where you're like, well, maybe basketball is my sport or no, was that not? Well, yes. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. Someone had a perfect, uh, description of basketball the other day. I, I you know, when I realized I was the enforcer, the, the, you've got five <laughs> fouls and, um, you know, play a little defense in the post every once in a while. I realized it wasn't for me, but, um, you know, I football was a bigger sport in my high school. So I think I almost fell in love with that. But, um, you know, as a kid, I always watched uh, Kansas basketball. Mm -hmm. So, like, that was the only college experience I ever grew up with. Who would have been playing at Kansas when you were in school? For basketball? It wouldn't have been like Mario Chalmers. No, anything, no, right? no. That was I, I don't even remember that year. Honestly, I just know that we won and, you know, carried that <laughs> forever. But, um, you know, for me, I grew up with like the Thomas Robinson and then. Once we started getting these fresh and like Andrew Wiggins. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or um, I went to a game. Perry Ellis. That, that's, yes. my, that's my guy. Shout out Perry Ellis. I don't think he'll <laughs> listen. But, uh, you know. You don't have to. He, he definitely knows about the podcast. Yeah, I think he does. <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a big tier one fan. Um, no, uh, growing up with him and him, um, Devontae Graham, you know. It was mm, okay, yeah. Glory years. So um, not many Kansas basketball fans up here. Um, Rightfully but so. I, when I came up here is when I first got my like football like college football is a big deal. I, I realized mm. that when I got here, you know, I, I kind of thought, you know, oh, just, you know, pays for college kind of a thing. But, um, you know, it's definitely been more than that up here and it means a lot to people. So, yeah, especially with the emergence of NIL, which we can get into that. Later. Sure. But that's that's got to be kind of a crazy thing too. to yeah. come from that perspective where it's like, yeah, you know, college football. Yeah. Just go, go play the so sport. So <laughs> then with that in mind, you said you went to a camp. Like what other schools did you look at? Did you look at any other schools or was it like Iowa got on the horn early? Like what was? Uh, honestly, I'd say Iowa got on the horn late, if anything. Oh, okay. Um, wasn't till a camp going into my senior year um, in June, a big man camp or a, a lineman camp. Um, other schools, I guess I was choosing between really would be K-State a little bit, but I never really got a scholarship offer officially from them. Mm. Um, what does that mean? So That's they, a weird way to phrase right, it, right? <laughs> and, and I phrase it like that on purpose. You know, they had recruited me for a while and just they just needed to see so much out of me versus Iowa saw one camp. And like I said earlier, didn't see me do a single line drill and still gave me, you know, the scholarship opportunity. So That's that was crazy. a big deal to me that they they believed in me here enough to, you know, know, know what I was about. So. That's so interesting. We always, um, it seems like we've been hearing so many of those stories just through talking th uh, with student athletes mm -hmm. that Iowa just has this knack of finding like, not to call you like a diamond in the rough, <laughs> right. right? Like, oh, you just happened to get a chance. Like clearly you were chosen to come to a camp for a reason, but to be able to say, you know what, actually, I think this guy would do better at offense. Uh, offensive line. I just find that so interesting that you hear so many of those stories at Iowa or like um, 
Logan Jones, uh, Logan Jones, Lindemann. yeah, yeah, like all that kind of stuff. Or, or um, take a guy from tight end and throw him down at the offense. Like right. you, you hear that story a lot too. Um, so yeah, I just find that so interesting. Yet another story like that. Yeah, there's there's something about. I think it's just something they're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and obviously Coach Ferentz and the staff have a really good eye for it. Um, another thing they they've had a rich history of taking quarterbacks and moving them all over the place. Yeah. You know, and it's just I think it's just a cerebral thing maybe too. But um, at the end of the day, there's a certain type of person you know, off the field, I think they're looking for. And, yes, um, and if you're willing to buy into that, you know, they'll be able to put you in a place to be successful. So, yeah, no, that totally makes sense. I yeah. guess I didn't think about that perspective too. Yeah, another that culture is... part. Yeah. <laughs> Just talk to Logan about it. Yeah. Yeah. We actually didn't I feel like we get that from a lot of guys, but, um, <laughs> do you have any siblings? I have one, get that on camera right there. That, yeah. that, that, that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have one, one younger brother. Okay. Yep. So he's, uh, a senior in high school right now. He's going to play football at K-State. No way. Yep. So okay. kind of funny. It, it's actually really funny because we were opposites. Uh, I We both got recruited by the same two schools, K-State and Iowa, really. Mm-hmm. And I chose Iowa because K-State wasn't recruiting as much. He chose K-State because Iowa wasn't recruiting as much. So um, full circle, but, you know, both great programs. So Yeah. Okay. And what position does he play? Linebacker. Linebacker. Yep. And and punter. And he's he's the the athlete. Gotcha. Right, but I'm, I'm the bigger guy, so I'll still beat him beat him in the in the fights. That's all that matters to Understood. me. Understood. Who's faster? Who's faster? I'll say him. It's it's weirdly close. I feel like. <laughs> okay. Uh, Is he a slow linebacker? Are you a fast no, lineman? I think I'm just a fast lineman. Okay. Fair. You know, if we're running a hundred yards, let's be frank. I'm not running a hundred yards in general, <laughs> so I uh, won't be doing that for a long time in my life, but. Um, no, he, it'd be closer. I think than he thinks, did you, this is one question that we get a lot with linemen. Like, did you wrestle at all or have any inkling to wrestle? No. So wrestling, you know, my buddies around me wrestled, but, um, for me, it was more of a basketball and it was during the same time. time. So that was kind of tough for that. I think it might be different here. Um, or it might be the same. I think it might be the same, same, same time. I think so. Um, she kind of had to choose, but I guess I chose basketball and sometimes, um, they look for that in certain, you know, offense linemen. I think half oh, yeah. us, hand placement, leverage, all that stuff. Yeah. And half of us are either basketball players or wrestlers mm-hmm. and you can tell who's who. Um, and they play a certain, you know, I think basketball kind of translates to pass protection a little bit better than mm. wrestling and run blocking. So that's something for you, Laura, oh. to keep, keep on your mind when you're watching. <laughs> well, it, uh, just me, do one of those. Let me ponder that for a minute. <laughs> Compartmentalize <laughs> that one. <laughs> you know what exactly that means. Um, cool. So question for you as far as basketball goes. Logan Jones, I'm pretty sure. Was he the one that uh, was feeling pretty confident? He said there's there's people who think there's hoopers on the team. I'm pretty sure he said that. Yeah. Were you one of them? Are you a wannabe hooper? Mm-hmm. A wannabe? Yeah. I... <laughs> No, I so don't Mason, think, I don't think he's here. talking about me. I, I may, t- I may, you know, <laughs> talk a big game, but I, sure. I mean, you know, I, like if you go down to the wreck, are you putting up at least, you know, five, 10 points? Yeah, I'll get, I'll get a scrappy five points, <laughs> like, like a <laughs> offensive rebounder, a, you know, I'll get, I won't get back on defense, we'll, we'll <laughs> like cherry, cherry, cherry pick, uh, you know, that's at least four points. So, um, that's you know, fair. I, I like passing. That's, that's my thing in basketball. So I think I could be like a facilitator kind of thing but yeah. I, I think i could be logan one-on-one we, we've talked about this before so okay uh, i wish he was you know we could we could have it on, <laughs> on here but um I, we've played you know he he acts like he was a, a different player than the, the one i saw so, but you know we'll have to settle that you know in the off season i don't know what it is about you guys but i swear everybody on the team thinks they can play basketball at That's a high level. <laughs> it's like the funniest thing right? jay higgins claims he's the lebron james we actually just had this real cool yeah out. jay jay and uh <laughs> Uh, Deontay Craig are both like Indiana guys, so basketball's huge. They're right? on the same they, AAU team too. Yeah, right? and and they <laughs> they think like, but when we when we play with them, it's so funny. You know, it's this all kind of stems from freshman year. This is when you figure out like who's who. Oh, sure. for sure. Um, and those two called fouls every <laughs> single time someone touched. Really, them. the yep. defensive guys. Yep. Yep. Which is crazy. I just lost game. so much respect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. So you know. That's Sometimes maybe if you get physical with it, it won't. You know, a real game. We'll see. But I feel like I want to do like a like a charity pickup basketball game with all of the guys that we've had on, like a Talking Hawks charity basketball Ooh, that game. That would be awesome. Our like all star basketball game. 
that like benefits the children's hospital or something yeah. like that. And just to really see like who's been talking and who's That's a really good idea, it. honestly. We'll I have like refs that. so they don't call their own fouls. <laughs> yeah. That, and and you could emphasize, you know, like an all-star approach, like, you know, let's not sprint around, but we're, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna get down to business for sure. <laughs> that, that's if, what, that was a long way to say let's cherry pick so I don't have to run back on defense. <laughs> yeah. That's what that was. <laughs> I mean, we've had some dudes on. We had Cooper on, uh, who said that he can hoop, which we know he can. Oh, hoop. he can hoop. Uh -huh. yeah, that we that guy can hoop. Yeah, <laughs> I, I played with him one time. That that was also a moment. You know, what was that sophomore year of college? I realized basketball wasn't my sport. <laughs> oh, okay. when I was already you know knee deep in football, obviously. Yeah. But when I watched Coop play, I said, "Okay, I'm not good." At <laughs> <laughs> so good. That's great. Okay, yeah. so growing up with one brother, yep. um, and you guys are so how many years apart would you be? About four? Yeah, four or five. Four or five. Yeah, okay. Like that. Was it like super competitive or were you just far enough that I you guys think, didn't get into it? I think it was just far enough it was never close. Understood. Um you know, if I, I love if that you I, said that with a grin. Yeah. If, if I yeah, I'm just I, I saw him yesterday, so I'm thinking about this. But if if I went easy on him, you know. I'd let him win every once in a while mm. just to keep it keep him coming back. <laughs> okay. Um, funny enough, I think it was. Oh my gosh, this would have been either spring break or over May break. I played him again. It's kind of a you know, let's see where your game's at thing. Mm -hmm. I, um, it didn't go as well as as before. So he's <laughs> he's finally like. The thing that was hurting him for a while was the height and the and the size. Okay, he's kind of catching up. So got it. I can't just back him down and shoot a layup anymore. <laughs> you know, kinda, my style. <laughs> but um, no, it, it was competitive. You know, playing sports, uh, playing video games, mm -hmm. um, any any sort of game. Yeah, always always yeah. competitive. Always is with brothers, right? It's so. kind of yeah. cool too, like offensive line versus linebacker. Mm -hmm. Like right. So when you were a senior, what would he have been a freshman, or would he have no? Not he was in eighth grade. Yet? It's Sounds it really right. stunk. So college, we've been on the same timeline of, which stinks for my parents. It's his senior year and mine. Oh shoot! And who are they picking? Well, they have to go back and forth. Like next <laughs> next weekend, they're my dad's going to Minnesota. My mom's staying back for his mm. homecoming or something. And gotcha. you know, it's. It, they live down there, so obviously I'd give them benefit of the yes. doubt. And you yeah. know, this isn't my last time, hopefully playing football. So that's the other thing. And they've been watching me for a while, so yes, you know. But you know, that's that's parent issues. You know, I'm sure you guys will have to make that decision you one know, day too. It happens. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow. That's I actually didn't think about that. Yeah. That's yeah. that pulls at the heartstrings of your mom. I'm sure. I know. That's gonna be tough to miss either one. Yeah. It's it'll be a big transition for both of us at the same time yeah. next year. So that's the glory okay. of a, a fifth year in college. Yeah. Yes, that's what it is. Huh. Yep. Okay. Yep. Very cool. Yep. So you're going to have um, to get one of those jerseys that's like cut halfway down. Cut in half. Yeah. It's a nice thing. My high school, black and gold. Oh, nice. Different gold though. Gold, gold. Like old gold. Like Purdue gold? Like Purdue mm -hmm. gold. Yeah. Understood. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I, I wouldn't go to Purdue. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't get it twisted. No, definitely not. <laughs> don't get it twisted. <laughs> gotcha. What's your major? Uh, so I graduated last December with sport and uh, recreation, just like Logan nice. and a few other guys. And so now I'm just in my master's for it. I mm -hmm. just figured while well, I have the fifth year, I try to get as much education of, as I can because after the semester, I'm done picking up textbooks. That's for sure. Yeah. So are you <laughs> taking like real classes? Yeah. Or? Don't do this to him on air. Well, some just guys. Are, I didn't. Yeah. Matt took like ping pong. His was that? Fifth what, year. What year I was already that? graduated. Yeah. So I graduated in. <laughs> Uh, would have been spring of 16 yeah. and then I had another year because I medically redshirted sure so I had another year and then I took I, I had to take 12 credit hours yep. but I only had to pass 6 to play in the bowl game so I only huh. passed 6 and I just didn't go to the other yep. 2 3 classes oh, should yes. I be writing myself that's out a, right no that's a strategy <laughs> that's, that's a strategy you guys take I, I think uh you know Either Coach, Coach Ferris brings it up at, at our spring meetings when he talks about GPAs and he's like a few of these guys were seniors kind of on their way out so right. i mean i i had count. above a i had a, like a three four gpa right like right and then just i was like i don't need this anymore sure i'm not no. going to grad school but you're taking it seriously so we're I'm not taking you it are. Uh, yeah yeah seriously yeah <laughs> yeah definitely cool so yep. what do you want to do with that eventually nfl careers we're over. talking like you're 58 you're out of the league you 58? just you just finished the league i'm 58 at the league <laughs> yeah 57 you retired at 57. okay okay 57 mm -hmm. Mm, I, I would I would like to be a line coach. Um, yeah. Back at your high school? Yeah, that would work. Or do you um, want to be college? <laughs> I kind of, you know, I kind of want to spread around, you know. Kansas City's not, or not too far from here. So, mm, you know, maybe East Coast, West Coast. I Texas, actually. that I, That's the wrong answer. Yeah, Texas. <laughs> Texas is the right answer. I, I've <laughs> yeah. been wanting to move to Texas for a while now. Why is that? So. 
I just hear good things. I like country music. Yeah. And are you a hunter or anything like that? I am not, but I if I lived in Texas, I think I would like it a lot more. You'd have to turn into a hog hunter to. for sure. Uh, yeah. They got a they got wild hogs everywhere. Yeah, that'd be cool. Feral hogs. I, my buddy uh went to you know, short story, went to New Zealand, did the same thing, but like I guess there you have it's not like guns, it's like you corral them with dogs and then no stab them with a knife or something. So not to get not to get uh, gruesome on the on the channel right now, <laughs> yeah. but um, you know, Texas. Wait, he paid. Well, to... whoa, whoa, let's get back. Texas, Texas. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah, skim yeah, over yeah. that. He he uh, he's like a big rugby guy, so he went. Oh, there so and... okay, that oh, that checks cool. out. Yep, yep like yep. rugby guys are scary dudes. Yes, very much. Wrestlers, <laughs> so he... rugby guys. There's like certain things you look for, and uh, yes. if you're yeah. about you know. If, so you're, he if like, you're an alley and you see cauliflower ear or the guy's <laughs> got an Australian accent, like Get turn out. around. Yeah. I think I would feel safer. Really? I think so. I don't know. I feel like if that's the other guy. No, no, no. Your yeah. guy is other side a, of the street. I don't have a cauliflower ear. And mm. We walked in. Like the guy that was mean to you at Iowa State. Like if he had cauliflower ear, that's the only time I would have been. Yeah, I had a fan. Someone was mean to you at Iowa State? Mason, I got oh my gosh. followed to my car. Meanly. As an Iowa fan against yeah. Iowa State, that's a shocker. Yes, it was. <laughs> that's that is scary though. It was really scary. The guy, yeah, Thank I you. wasn't there. I was. I was. I was getting. I get fueled every year we play them on the middle, on the middle fingers. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Fun. Those. They do have nice grass over there though. Yes, you know I went out there and admired that before the game. It's yeah, it's definitely quality. Yeah, high quality. And they do a good job. That's the only compliment Coach Ferentz, I think. Get, you know, agreed. Yeah, agreed. agreed. Everybody, Everybody everybody's trash, on the same page, but like the the grass is yeah. The, it's better than Northwestern and stuff like that. So. Northwestern, yeah. Purdue, I swear the whole, you, once you step, you can't find your shoe. <laughs> yeah. The grass is it's so, so high. Deep. The Northwestern 21 game, we could reach down and if you grabbed it by like two blades, you'd pull out a whole crater of grass. It was crazy. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, football weather, football conditions and everything. So. Gotcha. That's true. All right. What's yeah. your favorite, um, your favorite stadium to travel to? Hmm. Take Iowa State out because of the grass. Yeah. We get it. Uh, we, we've talked about the grass, obviously. Um, Minnesota. Definitely. Why is that? So I'm excited for this next weekend. They, ever since they changed that locker room, I say this like I've been here for 20 years by Coach France. <laughs> well, have you? They switched it um, when the Vikings played there because it had to be an NFL grade locker room as far as that's the rumor. Right. Um, so now it's like the most spacious thing in the world. Oh. So, so I didn't get that's to play the key. Under the new... You didn't get to play in the new locker room? No. Oh, nice. What year was your last year? 17. I don't, I don't, when, so six, really? 16, I was hurt. 17, I think we played in Minnesota. And it wasn't like a big spacious thing. We might've been at home in 17. Why am I blanking on 2017? I don't know. Either way. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Either way. Yes. Uh, NFL locker rooms are massive. NFL locker rooms are huge. And then I think their field's heated. So even Ooh. if it's cold, it's money. You know, yeah. this weekend's going to be different because the last two times we played there were 20, 20, 20 and 22 and both yeah. were freezing 22, especially. Yes. Yes. Was that the coldest game, like almost the coldest yeah. game in history or something like that there? Or it, something it was, along those yeah, lines? it was <laughs> ice bowl level. I think it, without that heated field, like I said, is definitely cold. Ice bowl. Ice. That's a throwback. Do you know yeah. what that game is? No, I didn't think so. Ice what on is, the field. That's all you have to know. Where at? Green Bay. Green Bay and Dallas. Got it. I don't that know what from Dallas. Probably Green Bay. Green Bay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but definitely Minnesota. I, I think it's uh, it's very, the, it's about the locker room. It's As much as it's not psychological to build a terrible visitor's locker room, it is the smartest thing to do as a, as a college football program because that's... Like Northwestern, I feel like you get about oh, this much. <laughs> it's, it's alleys. It's it's yes. like you're on a plane, you know, oh. and everybody's, it's it's bad. And you're so. trying to like put the pads on. Yeah. You got to like go outside you're the locker room. bumping in the guy. It's, yes. just, it's claustrophobic. You yeah. Know? Everybody gets claustrophobic. I think Maryland was pretty tight too. I don't know if Maryland's was. tight. Um, the nice thing is they have the, the also, so it's, it's about space. Mm -hmm. And then it's about, for me, it's about like a place where the team can meet. Because mm. like if Coach Ferentz is talking to the team and you can't see him or like <laughs> yeah because they put it like in the middle so you're yeah. wrapped around it's like tight out versus Maryland they have a nice big room it's just not a lot of space on the lockers I guess but you know Got there's it. at least a place where we could gather as a team you that know makes sense. And, and play team football and, like, and acknowledge that so. or like Rutgers you have to walk single file like for three miles before the you stairs find the stairs <laughs> yeah. the stairs at Rutgers I, I, I don't did you have the stairs or was yours just a long we were walk? in the stadium but we had to go we were really long and then yes you had stairs down and then you had to come back up to go out yep so they built now I they, I don't know if they updated they built stairs going up 
I get I from the locker room? 30, 30 steps from the field to the locker room going up. <laughs> That's a lot. And and Wrigley was just as bad too. It was the same oh, thing. Yeah. How was it playing in Wrigley? So <laughs> we got there and I was like, oh, you know, I'm sure it'll be nice. You know, I'm thinking of Minnesota, like, oh, this is a professional style locker room and stuff, but it's also baseball. You're right. It's baseball. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you know, I don't know which dugout we're gonna be in. And I figured since we were on I, I had only been to Royals games and I, I think it's the home side, the first base side of a mm. baseball stadium. I don't know. If, um, Potentially. But we go in and, you know, I'm like walking. Oh, there's a big uh, bullpen and stuff. And then turn the corner. There's 50 stairs. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Guaranteed. So we said, like, all right, at halftime, we're just going to meet in this bullpen area. We're not, we're not going <laughs> to have not even going a guy cramp going up 50 stairs in the middle of November in uh, Chicago. And that so, was when you guys, you guys were on the same sideline? Like, yeah. That, that was, was also weird, weird but um, definitely a super cool experience, you know, yeah. the stadium and stuff like that. So I, I and the grass is better than Northwestern's. Right. So that as well. That makes sense. So playing Minnesota now coming up. Right. Can't wait to get to that locker room. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but we were talking, well, we will talk about this a little later on in the podcast, but um, the We Hey Iowa chant. Hmm. Oh. You don't know about this? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Listen. I might have heard oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a thing and it's been going on for a really long time, at least, at least since 2013. Okay. okay. So at the very least, that's mm-hmm. just when I saw an article. But they do this, like, who hates Iowa? We hate Iowa. And, like, they do it everywhere. So, like, it doesn't Mi- matter what team they're playing. Oh, what Minnesota does. Yeah. yeah, like, if they're playing UCLA, they'll chant this. Yes. And it's the fans. It's not the players. Yeah. But <laughs> it's just, like, so crazy because, obviously, me growing up in Iowa, I, told me, I was like, I didn't even know that we were that big of rivals, if I'm being honest. Like, there's, like, <laughs> Iowa State, Nebraska, right? Yeah. Like, Wisconsin's always a big game. Yep. Minnesota, I didn't really see as this, like, <gasps> kind of like rivalry yeah there's floyd that's exciting yeah but it just wasn't i don't know know because we won so much or what it is but either way is there any sort of like oh i can't like we can't wait for this game because there's a trophy on the line like any of those kind of feelings like going into it yeah is it more like they're just really into this rivalry? (laughs) you know um i think it's mutual obviously it's a rivalry but uh, you know, last year obviously didn't end the way we wanted to. So right. we're going to have a, the empty, we're going to have that a, wasn't. Yeah. Well, I, it's so weird. Cause he did <laughs> it like this. And I was like, Oh, half of him was saying it was a fair catch. And the other half was a Peter. I, I don't know. You know, we, we got it down now. Trust me. Coach, Coach, <laughs> Coach Woods brings it up every time we do part return now. So, um, but, um, you know, we're going to have an empty trophy case in the middle of our weight room. Mm-hmm. So, that feeling does not feel good, right. um, obviously. And uh, these games, they just mean a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like it'll come down to the, the same details that Coach Ferentz will preach in the mm-hmm. fundamentals. And um, but you know, there'll be an extra level, I think, of focus and stuff for us, and especially against a rival like this. And I think all you know, four of our rivals, um, it's the same thing each week. Right. You know, you know, like you you circle those ones in your mind on the calendar. Mm-hmm. You know, knowing when those are at, and um, you know, Minnesota is a big one. And you know, talk about history, like. I think they hate us. It must stem from like the sixties when like they were really dominant and we were pretty good too. So I think it might be from there, but I have not, yeah, I have not heard this. We hate Iowa. Chance, so unless it. it's at like, yeah, I'll, I'll I'm going to definitely hear it now. <laughs> right. Th- this weekend. So, yeah. um, but I, they, they have a good crowd up there, so it'll be, it'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. We were talking about, uh, you brought up the weight room a little bit. Yep. So Logan Jones found out that he's a 700 pound squatter. Yeah. And like, stupid for i think it was 470 in the clean like five something or maybe it was six something in the squ- no 700 squat and then like five something in the bench like it was that i remember like when i came in i was allergic to the weight room when i was in high school yeah was that Me and you both <laughs> so it was a pretty big <laughs> shell shock yeah getting here yeah um i think i don't know i think of the first days i came in and saw uh the older guys in that winter phase like lifting that winter four phase plates. Is- and four plates was a lot to me back then. Like, I was like, holy crap. Um, You're talking but, on each side, right? Yes. Yes. On each side. Yeah. Not total. No, no. By the um, way, a plate is 45 pounds. Got it. Yep. Okay. Uh, so when I saw, like, what some of these older guys are doing, it was like crazy mm-hmm. numbers. And I looked at the records. I was like, gosh, you know, well, and back then I was, I was only 250 pounds when I came in. Oh too. yeah. That, that'd make a difference. So I was like, you know what? I can put on 60 pounds, get up there. No, it, it's still a lot of weight <laughs> on your back. So, um, yes. no, Logan is super strong. You know, he's even just as fast. I mean, his 10 yard is, I think it was one, five, three. Dang. He's close to one, four. Yeah. He's, and I think wow. the record is like one, I think it's one, five, 
two or one from so right uh, James Daniels. Oh yeah, from, uh, you know, James was explosive. Yeah, he's he's a great athlete. He's doing well now. He's you see, he was the only guy in the NFL wearing the um, guardian cap in the game. No, I didn't. Yeah, know that. he had like a like a color like check over them. Like I a colored one. Like a, it had the Steelers logo on the side, and like he was wearing it in game. Well, now I gotta talk to him about it. Yeah, you guys, you, you guys see that? You guys see what that was? about. I had no idea. I lived you with could his even do that. in college. Oh, okay. So I got to know James pretty well that way. But now I have to, I have to ask him. Yeah. Um. But no, the the weight room stuff is once you first get there, it's crazy. We had young guys today, like you know the older guys in the season. It's yeah. it's two days a week. Younger guys today, they had max squat. Right. Yeah, they're Devo. They get <laughs> as a Devo guy, it was crazy. So, um, you know, it's it's definitely another beast in there. But once you once you get over the top of that, like that's when you start to feel like, okay, I'm ready for the season mm. type of deal. I think so. Um, definitely can make the most out of that out of any position, any position, right? Uh, yeah. So it's been been good for me, been good for Logan, been good for all the alignment. What do you um what do you do on your like off time? What's your hobbies? Mm. Um, so during the season. Um, if I'm not eating, I'm probably <laughs> hanging out, watching movies. Just I yeah. love, I'm a movie guy. What's your not, favorite movie? You got to say movies, but movie, <laughs> movies, it, movies. It, just cause it's so hard, you know, it's, it's you think genre. It, no, but, uh, favorite movie, Wedding Crashers. Okay. It's a rare, co- <laughs> that, that, wow, that com- that's, that's a- not a go-to comedy for a lot of people, but I, I, I die laughing one. every time I watch, I've got a. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like three wedding crasher shirts that people get me. So, That's but, awesome. um, I love that. Love comedies, you know, love okay. laughing. And if I'm not watching those, I might mix in a Marvel movie every now and again, or, <laughs> um, some like, I love watching the Batmans too, the, the dark Knight. I, I've, I, and for me, so I'm, you know, a movie guy, like I say, it takes me like two or three times to watch a movie to finally understand like what it's about. Oh, that sounds, you know, Mason, like, are Mason, you okay? Are we, yeah, Are you, I don't that, think, that's I don't a good think initial that response. Have you hit your head too many times? When so I watch a movie originally, people make fun, you know, uh, Jeremy Chapel, the line, he's a big movie guy, so he makes fun of me. He's like, no crap, that's what it was about. You know, <laughs> I'm watching it. When I first watch a movie, I'm like, oh, that was a cool movie. Like, I, it's like a picture book, right? Oh, sure. Then I turn on the subtitles. Then it's like, okay. Then, you know, subtitles again. And I really, I got it down now. Like the, you, have you guys watched the new Dune movies? No, we have not. They, you should for okay. one. They're really good. Three um, times though. Yeah, watch I'd, I'd watch the first one three times to like understand. Because at first, at first, I understand characters. Then it's like, all right, I got to understand plot, and it's like, what, like what the meaning is behind Are you the movie? Be a movie critic? Yeah, maybe. I this mean, is so funny. This yeah, I, I just, I, it takes me a while, and. You know, the comedies, I like watching those because you just sit there and laugh. That's yeah. that's what the movie's about. It's about, it's right. like, no, he made a joke. There's no <laughs> meaning to that. Um, but no, I, Wedding Crashers is my favorite movie to, to say the least. Got that, it. So. Have you ever seen him just go with it? Yes. That's my favorite movie. Is it? Yeah. I like it. How many yeah. times have you seen it? Do you know what it's three. about? Five or six, probably? <laughs> it's, yeah. So you yeah. know what it's about? Yeah, I do. Okay. I've the it, the like, funniest memorized. guy in that one is um the... The guy who's the Ger- the German Dolph boyfriend. Lundgren. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like yeah. saved the life of Jesus. No, it's so, dumb. so funny. It's just one of those movies where you're like, this is so stupid. But I like, know. It's also, it's an effortless one. Like yep. you say, like you can just sit back and sit laugh back, at it. Laugh. There's nothing to like, oh, I wonder. No. Right. Like you yeah. know what they mean by no, it. No, comedy movies, it. I get them right away. Yeah, it's totally. just, it's just people being people. <laughs> it's it's yeah. the it's the crazy <laughs> drama ones that I don't understand. So Okay. Yeah. There we go. That's right. fair. Yeah, that like the, the ones that are winning like Oscars, it's like, why is this winning an Oscar? Totally. I have to watch it three times to find out. Like, why. did no. you watch The Revenant? I've seen oh. half. Yeah. Mm. Did you watch that one? I, I did. But Do you like I, it? <sighs> you don't get it? I, <laughs> I, 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 I have all these either ones. I don't know what it's about. Okay. Locally owned and operated, Performance is a full service restoration company serving Eastern Iowa. As an IICRC certified firm, their multi-licensed technicians have decades of experience in water, mold, and fire mitigation. Whether it's your home or business, this is the team you want in a time of need. Performance Restoration, 319-626-2292. Hey, Hawk fans looking for the perfect spot to fuel up before or celebrate after a Hawkeye win? Look no further than Marquee Pizzeria, located in the vibrant Iowa River Landing. Their wood-fired pizzas have truly changed the pizza game. Whether you're cheering on the Hawkeyes or just searching for a delicious meal, Marquee Pizzeria is the place to be. Swing by and experience the best pizza in Iowa. Go Hawks! 
When it comes to keeping our home comfortable, we trust only the best. Loudon Plumbing and Heating. Whether it's fixing a leaky sink, keeping the house cool, or making sure the furnace runs smoothly in winter, Loudon Plumbing and Heating is our go-to. For reliable service, trust the corridor's best. Loudon Plumbing and Heating. Looking to make a splash online in Eastern Iowa? Digital Boost is your local go-to digital marketing agency. They help local businesses connect with their ideal customers online. Digital Boost has a diverse client base, ranging from small businesses to industry leaders, including well-known brands like DNR Pest Control and Advanced Millwork. Visit their website at www.digitalboostia.com to learn more or contact them for a free in-person consultation. Yeah, You've given us a lot of nutrition facts today, Mason. That are like, I know I sound I sound <laughs> smart, don't I? Is that good? Is that good? Is that really good job? No, uh, it's, you know it's the it's the suit. Yeah, that's what it is. Obviously, it gives you more credibility. Sure, I totally believe sure. that. Halfway to a doctorate wearing this thing. <laughs> uh, really close. One other thing I would add about the food is I was thinking about this on the way over because. I knew food was coming up, come up, honestly. <laughs> but uh, one rule my grandpa taught me, pass it down to my mom. If you sit down, you can't get up until your plate is clean. Oh. So no crumbs, no nothing. Fair. Yep. No matter what you get, you better get enough that it feeds you. And like a first yep. plate, definitely. Like right. second plate, it's like, all right, you're good. Like you, you, <laughs> you did your best effort. There. <laughs> you, did you, tried, you tried to do the most. So, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. So, I've always had the mindset of a, of a big guy, so that's always helped. I was going to ask you too. Are your parents tall? No. Really? No. My and how tall is your brother? Six two. How's that? I happen? know luck, I guess. But uh, he, uh, my dad, his uncles were like six eight or something like that. He's okay. only five eleven. My dad. So and my mom's my mom's five nine five eight. That's tall for a girl though. Sure, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> wait, how, how tall are you? Five six. Okay, that's average. That's still average to above average, I'd say. Honestly. Oh yeah, slightly above. I mean, it's average. like what five five. You're hitting me with nutrition facts again, like yeah. bio biology or something. <laughs> like, what is this? I know it's it's all this time I spent around Jennings Dunker and <laughs> Kill Krogh and all these guys who are doc going to be doctors or something. So, oh, um, Jennings Dunker's going to be a doctor. He's trying to be. Oh, we need to have him on. Yeah, you should. He's got the. He doesn't have the look of a doctor. No, I know. That's the funniest <laughs> part. Like, imagine if he came in and was like, "All right, I got your test. <laughs> Do you have your own test right now? Like, yeah, are you on steroids? Are you on steroids, dude? You just like the delivery guy for this? Um, what were we talking about? Uh, uh, height. Just, yeah. yeah, my my dad's side. So my dad's side is all tall, but he's not tall. Basically, okay. Yeah. What do your parents? He's do? not a runt of a litter, but he's like the third runt. That's so weird. At what point were you at, um, taller than him? What age did you? Oh, that was a that was a great time, wasn't it? Like <laughs> as soon as you get taller than your parents, you just I felt like I was uh -huh. top of the world. Yep. <laughs> I think uh sixth or seventh grade. No way. Yeah, I mean wow. I was six three, eighth grade. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I mean, so and I grew just three inches a year, just to balance three inches every year huh. as a kid. Did you have growing pains? No, I thought I had Oshka Squatters as a, I probably pronounced that wrong, but yeah. as a freshman, because I was growing too fast. Or actually, it was because I was putting on way too fast. Growing pains, no. Um, I was supposed to be, you know, the doctors, I don't know, they're probably already telling your your kids like, oh, yeah. they're going to be, what, six foot something? Sure. Yeah. yeah. What do they know? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, told me you're going to be six, seven between six, seven and six, ten when I was in like fourth or fifth grade. Buddy, you're six, eight. You yeah. already talked about this. Yeah, we did already. Guys. That, that was right. mentioned earlier. But <laughs> <No>. <laughs> huh. No, but uh, no, no growing pains. I think it's just because I went through a balanced three inches a year. So Got it. I guess oh. if you want to do that, well, uh, if you want to grow three inches oh, a year, that, that one, there, if you though. want to grow three inches a year, just clean your plate every time you eat. <laughs> Yeah. That's what you got to do, I guess. Understood. So That is the most lineman answer I think you could have been <laughs> given yeah. at all. I like that Perfect. a lot. Oh, amazing. Well, this was so great. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming of in. Of course. This was like one of the, I think one of the most entertaining interviews we've had. Nice. That's good. Full disclosure, we're going to have food after we yeah. record. So. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> we went every which I, I, way. I though. wasn't going to show up. They didn't have food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's so glad fair. you promised No, thank you guys fair. so much for having me. And yeah. It's a pleasure. Good time. Absolutely. Well, yep. we wish you the best of luck this season. And thank then you. Obviously, when the when the draft and all the other things come up, we'll be watching. Of and course. We might have to just do a, another episode. That'd be great. As we get on to that point. But thank you so much again and enjoy Minnesota's locker room. I will. Thank you. <laughs>
But we hope you loved this episode and the interview. And like we said, it's a bye week, so we don't have anything to preview. We hope you'll come back next week. We're going to have a fantastic interview. And then, of course, we will be previewing the Ohio State game at Ohio State. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. Why did you come in so quickly like that? But in the meantime, make sure you are liking and subscribing on both of the YouTube channels that we post on. So of course it's on the Talk About Network, but then we put the extended interviews and episodes over on the Talk and Hawks channel. So if you haven't gone over and subscribed to that one, make sure you're doing that as well. And then of course on social media, TikTok, X slash Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, if you haven't followed us and aren't liking our reels and all of our posts yet, please make sure you're doing that. We just appreciate all of your support and all of you coming back week after week after week for Talking Hawks brought to you by Hills Bank. We will be back next week and um, go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks.